Hey, Myotech. If I get Ryzen for a pure gaming build, is it gonna be just fine? Okay, I need to make it clear that this isn't actually a review. I don't have Ryzen 7. I can't create benchmarks to show me. If benchmarks are what you're looking for, there is a bajillion of them out there. Places like Bitwit, Gamers Nexus, Linus Tech Tips. Keep going, there's bajillions of them out there. Look at places I'm subscribed to, there's lots. What I'm gonna be doing here is offering my thoughts and conclusions on it. Is this what you're looking for? Is this the sort of thing that um, you need? What, what things is Ryzen really good for? That sort of thing. The elephant in the room with Ryzen 7 is clearly gaming. And if you're here to ask, can I game with Ryzen 7? If I get a Ryzen 7, will I be okay with gaming? And first I'm gonna answer the question. The answer is yes. If you get a Ryzen 7 or if you already pre-ordered, if you already have it, and gaming is what you plan on doing with it, then you're going to be just fine. Um, it doesn't perform as well as the 7700K, but the places that it doesn't perform as well as is usually areas where the GPU is not the bottleneck at very high frames, at low resolutions. If you're gaming at 1440p at 4K, then the GPU is gonna be more of a bottleneck and your Ryzen 7 CPU is going to perform just fine. Let me make it clear, if you have a Ryzen 7 and you're gaming on it and you're not happy with your FPS, in most cases, buying a better GPU is gonna solve your problem. The issue that I'm here to address is how utterly useless that question is. The trouble is it's a very loaded question, and if that's what you're asking, you probably have an expected answer in mind, and you're not here to actually gain information, you're here to confirm your biases. The question that more people should be asking themselves is, if you're building a PC for gaming exclusively, what is going to offer you the best value? And for that, Ryzen 7 is not the answer. Right now, four core performance is standard in game development. Even DirectX 12 doesn't really take advantage of as many cores as Ryzen 7 has to offer. Something like a 7700 with far better single core performance is really going to be much stronger in gaming. With the state of the CPU and gaming industry as it is today, if you're looking to build a fresh, new, pure gaming build, the best value is probably somewhere around the i5-7500. And the i7-7700K still offers better value, better dollar for performance than any of the Ryzen 7 CPUs do. Well, that kind of solves it, doesn't it? The AMD, big flop again, no surprise. Intel's gonna take the cake. They don't have to do anything. Not quite yet. That's not the whole story at all. First of all, I was talking about the CPUs available for purchase today. Ryzen 7 is not the best value for gaming. However, once Ryzen 5 comes out, you'll be able to get four cores and eight threads and six cores and 12 threads for 200 and 260 US dollars respectively. That is likely going to be a far better value than Intel offers, even if Intel offers better performance at the high end. If you end up getting a 1400X or a 1600X with four and eight cores with hyperthreading respect, SMT, sorry, not hyperthreading respectively, then you're likely going to be perfectly fine on most games at high settings across the board. It's going to be fine. That means Ryzen still has its chance to shine as an affordable alternative to Intel later in the year, probably quarter two. I don't know exactly when, probably right around when Vega's gonna launch. That would make a lot of sense. So honestly, if you can wait, it might be worth waiting. And if you can't, then buy what's there now. If you end up buying an i7-7700 or a 7500, those are not terrible choices. 
Another thing to consider is applications outside of gaming. If you're a heavy workload professional and you need a powerful workstation PC, then Ryzen 7 might be for you. Look at where it excels, look at its drawbacks, consider your options, consider that it's the 1800X is half the price of the 6900 and in many cases performs as well or nearly as well, in some cases better than the 6900K, and consider your options for the price. For many people, Ryzen 7 will be the right choice. Another thing to consider is looking into the future. Right now, games use six cores, some up to eight threads to justify eight threads, but not necessarily dedicated cores. It's really the same argument that's happened a few times already. If you look back when the first dual core came out, gamers were saying, oh, dual core isn't worth it. Games only use one core. Why do you need two? Same thing happened when quad core came out. Everyone was like, oh no, you don't need quad core. Games don't use that. They only use two cores. Right now, you don't need 16 threads and eight cores because games really only utilize eight cores or four cores and six, four cores and eight threads. Over time, over the next couple of years, if Ryzen and if if Ryzen can offer more threads and more cores, and Intel responds and maybe even ups theirs a little bit, if they move things up a if they move things up a tier, like I've said they might before, then people are going to have more cores that are available to them. Meaning, in the near future, then something like a a 1700X or an 1800X might actually be worth it for gaming, but right now it isn't. This means that it could be, if you want to buy one CPU now and have it last a long time into the future, even if you're just gaming, the 1700X or even maybe the 1800X might actually be a good decision. The downside to this is I can't actually offer you benchmark and proof that the market is going to change like this. That's why if you go with a 1700X or an 1800X for gaming, it is a bit of a gamble. And now you might actually have to consider the meta of things. Look at how AMD and Intel are doing as companies and if it matters to you. And honestly, it probably should. AMD is hurting. They're hurting big, and if Ryzen isn't successful, it's very likely that they are never going to be able to do this again. Ryzen is basically their last hurrah if it's not a success. If AMD fails, that means Intel is going to have a perfect market monopoly on x86. That means... Intel never has to innovate desktop again. Oh, but look at monopoly laws. Intel can't have a monopoly. Yeah, neither could Microsoft, and they got fined some money, a little bit. Um, Intel, I think, has already been fined about a billion dollars for mon monopolistic behavior. Big deal. Intel can handle it. They'll just pay it. It doesn't matter to them. Honestly, I have a hard time recommending buying a product because of the shape the company is in. And, be, and for that reason, I'm not telling you to go out and buy Ryzen. I am not about to buy Ryzen. I might later, but I'm probably going to stick with my 3570K for now and see how things go. But if the market situation and the health of AMD as a company and its ability to combat Intel is valuable to you, then it might be worth your while buying AMD even just for a gaming build right now just to help out AMD. In conclusion, am I disappointed in Ryzen? A little bit. I I was hoping that it would perform better in gaming. Um, but at the same time, it's not terrible at gaming. And while it doesn't match the 6900K in every sense, it does in many cases. 
and in some cases it absolutely blows it away. 